Welcome to the Cube Research's coverage of Open Observability Summit 2025. I'm Sam Weston, and I am here with Paul Ashawati today. Welcome, Paul. Hey, great to be here, Sam. Awesome to have you. Uh, so we were recently, last week, at Open Observability Summit, part of Open Source Summit North America 25, and it was a great addition to the event. You know, I, I really enjoyed hearing all the keynotes and everything that's happening in observability specifically. So I would love to hear your kind of key takeaways of the day overall before we dive into some of the, the huge announcements. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what was really exciting about the event was uh, we just came off our App Dev Done Right Summit uh, research uh, uh, event that we did. We and we did, as you know, we did day zero, day one, day two, and DevSecOps research. And that our day two summit um, it couldn't have been any more in alignment to the Open Observability Summit because of all the research that we were finding uh, and all the key takeaways that we were finding from our research was in direct alignment to the announcements that were happening there. You know, when we look at um, uh, observability, we were finding that uh, unified observability was the key focus out of the event, right? It is really kind of consolidating down. And what we found in our research that there's six to 15 different tools, 75% of the respondents indicated that six to 15 different tools for observability. And that goes across whether it's cloud log management, alerting, uh, APM, NPM, uh, tracing, logs, et cetera. So there's a lot happening there. And having a unified view was was a, one of the major takeaways, in my uh, opinion. And it was also really great to talk about OTEL and the open telemetry initiatives that were happening and how that was really becoming more wide stream uh, with regards to adoption across the ecosystem. Yeah, uh, this is a great question. You know, like when I think about uh, observability, right? We we uh, and you can contact us and have us have a lot more discussion around the research here. But what we found is uh, logs is an area that many and most uh, observability practices are striving to kind of get to. They're moving away from just collecting data and being quote storage admins, right? And and not doing anything with the information. They're moving towards actionable insights and useless analysis from. Uh, from Chronosphere with Logs 2.0 with their announcement. It was about uh, basically driving through this uh, utility scoring system that really helped uh, 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 track the, the, the Corian dashboard usage, uh, generating the proactive recommendations. This is key because now you can take action on the information. It's no longer red, yellow, green on the dashboard. It's more about what happens, how to take those actions and actually not be a storage admin and, and remove the uh, the the unnecessary resources uh, that you may not be needing anymore. So that was a big, big announcement, Sam. Definitely a big one. And keeping going on that, you know, we see that log volumes are growing 250% year over year. And this increases data sprawl, it increases the observability budget. So Logs 2.0's volume analysis and Lotus functionality should give more control over that. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, agreed. I mean, this goes back to my previous comment of, you know, not storing unnecessary information. When you look at um, this announcement and Logs 2.0 from Chronosphere, the analysis and quota functionality really gives the team more control over the data sprawl and observability budget, right? So you can actually plan. This is something that uh, was a challenge or has been a challenge and is cont continues to be a challenge for many organizations uh, where they're not able to monitor volume trends um, enforce team level quotas or project the growth, which that's a big one, projecting the growth, because that way you can understand that you don't have those runaway costs. And that's a big factor when it comes to observability, because understanding that uh, allows for proper planning. It also allows for, um, you know, utilizing the technologies, depending, wh um, depending on where you are, irrespective of where you are in your own journey. You could be early in your observability practice, or you can be very mature. That um, log volume management and quota analysis functionality gives you more control over your 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 data and your data sprawl. 
And talking about the maturity in these organizations, you know, right now we're primarily talking about logs, but metrics and tracing is is really where everybody wants to get to. So when we want to start unifying all of those views, you know, that's what's going to help with the resolution times of developer efficiency and Chronosphere has melt for that. So what else can we expect there as, as we reach higher levels of maturity? Yeah, Sam, this is a great question. And actually, this was directly from our research. We were finding that 54% of respondents of our research are looking for a unified view. Having a melt platform or a metrics, uh, events, uh, logs, and tracing kind of uh, platform allows for a unified view, a unified approach to understanding the data. But also, more importantly, it's not just about having dashboards of individual products. It's about the uh, ability to uh, have resolution times and developer efficiencies. Um, where you can actually move from one action to another, taking, and dare I say AI, taking AI and allowing AI to do some of that manipulation of the triggers that may occur. So if you have an event that occurs and it's something that comes up in the log, you can take actionable insights across and, and you know, using this Mel platform to have that unified view for a single pane of glass. I, and I said something I almost never say, but having a single view for your observability to understand that root cause analysis to improve the MTTR, uh, that really helps across uh, with the telemetry types across your entire ecosystem. So I think it's important. It aligns nicely to our industry data, Sam, and what we're seeing in our research. Um, you know, I think that that's a, a big impact for Chronosphere, a big advantage for Chronosphere to come out the door with uh, having that unified view because we're seeing, as I said, 54% of our respondents of a global study are looking to move towards that type of platform. Right. Now, I really thought that we were going to get through this whole video without talking AI, but glad you brought it up. Are there any last thoughts on observability plus AI before we, we close out our session here? Yeah, I think Sam, this is uh, this is definitely an area with a lot a lot of organizations are growing and trying to understand what they do next, right? Observability plays very closely with security. You have to know and understand something in order to secure it, and vice versa. So this is something that we we're going to watch very closely as observability solutions kind of uh, feed into the, the the DevSecOps plays that we see, especially across the CI/CD pipeline and across the SDLC. I think that's a big part of it. I think that maturity of of, uh, of observability uh, practices within organizations is going to continue to evolve and grow. We're going to see more adoption, especially when you have products like Chronosphere that come out the door with, with these platform approaches, these unified views, that will allow for uh, uh, an adoption that's a frictionless way of delivering. So I think that's going to happen um, as we, you know, sooner rather than later now. I couldn't agree more, but thank you so much, Paul, for all of your insights. It's always great having you on. You always bring the data. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us as we cover Open Observability Summit 2025. Stay tuned. We'll catch you next year.